Yes, all right. Welcome back to Kosi's Asno Podcast. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? In this video, we are going to be looking at how Martin Odegaard actually destroyed West Ham. Of course, we didn't win, so the word destroyed might not make a lot of sense. But for me, it makes a lot of sense because he was the only player on that pitch that I thought was outstanding when we were three goals down so and Mikel Arteta also talked about it how um he helped the club stabilize and and, and how he, he helped his teammates you know regain you know the confidence and everything um you know we had lost at three goals down against West Ham it was an epic performance for me from Martin Odegaard and he's the player I've chosen to talk about in that game every game we shall be choosing one player whether we lose or we or, or we win we'll be losing one player either the best performer um or the worst performer of course to, yesterday there were two best performers i think Callum Chambers was very, very good. Um, Martin Odegaard was very, very good as well. But I've chosen uh, Martin Odegaard for issues of merit because I thought he was the best player. I, I thought Lacazette was good as well, especially um, in the final third, that finish, um, th th that first goal, and then the second goal. But the reason as to why I'm going with Martin Odegaard is he was involved in all, go in, in, in all the goals we scored. And he was involved in, in in the way we controlled that game. I just love this boy. I don't know. I, I don't know how Arsenal is going to replace Martin Odegaard next season. We just need to get someone. You know, we, we just need to get a player who's as good as Martin Odegaard, or we just need to side Martin Odegaard. As simple as that. So I'm going to be taking you through his game, uh, his game by numbers, and I'm also going to take you to uh, the tactical board. Of course, we do have the tactical board on a daily basis, and see how Martin Odegaard actually played and destroyed um, West Ham, which I think was an epic performance. Epic, epic performance. So let us look at his game, you know, game, game by numbers. This is according to um, Squawker Football uh, on Twitter. And um, he had a 93 passing accuracy. Of course, all of us know his passing is, has never been awful. One of the greatest, greatest, you know, um, you know strong, you know, attributes of his game is the passing he, he always has that you know good passing so i i think the passing is okay 95 touches um for martin odegaard and 16 of them in the penalty area and if you remember the debate we had in in, in december when when um edu was blabbling nonsense we said we wanted the player who can move a ball forward into the penalty area because you, uh, by then Emily Smith Rowe was not actually playing, um, you know, with us, so he was not playing. Uh, we were playing William Pepe, um, I think, and Saka. Yeah, uh, those were the three. Then uh, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, and uh, and the issue was, we don't have a player who moves the ball into penalty areas. And now I, I think, you know, look, it's just one game, and Martin Odegaard had sixteen entries, sixteen entries into the penalty area that is outrageously good that is so good he had nine crosses and imagine we had two fullbacks and martin odek had had the most number of crosses on the pitch nine nine crosses and of course um i think i i've already told you he, he you know he got involved in every goal we scored he had five touches in the opponent's box five touches in the opponent's box he is not a striker he's a number 10. he had four tekons the most number you know the, the most number of tekons recorded yesterday he had four chances created more than any other player on the pitch four chances created and like i said if you look at that um uh, if you look at this the first goal Callum chambers is cross it's martin odegaard if you look at the second goal um again Callum chambers is cross it's martin odegaard and if you look at the third goal Pepe's cross to pierre mcabamea not to, to to alexander lacazette again it's initiated by martin odegaard so for me he's just superb he's just so good he had three shots um and, and there was a shot i thought um if he had decided to go low um he could have scored that uh, but he decided to go up and uh, and, and there was um a block uh, an interception i don't i don't remember it, whether it was a uh, dawson but you know if he I, I thought if he if he had decided to go low um he would have had a better chance to score that one um than when than deciding to go up you know in the air but i don't care do i um he had two falls um one he was you know two falls one and one shot 
on target. So that was his game by numbers. And you can look at the quality of Martin Odegaard. A, a, a passing accuracy of 93%, 95 touches in the game, 16 penalty area entries, 9 crosses, 6 dwells won, 5 touches in the opponent's box, 4 tackles, no takes on, 4 chances created, 3 shots and a shot in target, and then foul 2 times. There is no Arsenal player who is, you know, who is as good at this. We, we just have to be honest with ourselves. There is no Arsenal player who is as good as this. And... You know, for me, I always rant about the quality of these players and some of you tell me that I'm not an Arsenal fan, I'm a Spurs fan, I don't like these players. But the truth is, if you look at Odegaard and then you look at, you know, and then you look at Granny Jacker and then you look at... For me, it doesn't make sense. Of course, many of you are going to say still I don't like, you know, um, Jacker, but... I told you, I liked Jacker before. I, 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 I liked Jacker when he was still, you know, playing with when he was still playing with Gladbach, he liked him. I, I thought we should actually sign him. And when we signed him, I was happy because by that time, you know, I was following too much of the Bundesliga. But he's not good enough. And, and, and for me, that's it. But anyway, let's look at um, Martin Odegaard's game and how he was actually uh, controlling the game for us. And one of the things I like about Martin Odegaard, and, and, and that I think even if he goes away, that will never change, is... The way he helps us get the ball in this area, and I'm sorry for that. Just need to get my pen so right. Okay, okay. The way he helps us get the ball in this area, that is, that was a problem before we got Martin Odegaard. That was a big problem for us, and everybody can tell you. We could have the ball. We could control this area very well. Danny Ceballos, uh, you know, Granny Jack, uh, Muhammad and any. Anyone can control this area because, you know, it's all about getting that ball and, and passing it, to, you know, sideways to the person next to you. But going forward, that was a very, very big Arsenal problem. And everybody knows that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not lying. Everybody knows that. So what Martin Odegaard gives us and what he gave us against um, West Ham, and that's why um, I, I think we caused so many problems to West Ham than they expected is... He gets that ball, let me just use a rectangle. He gets this ball from wherever, or from Pablo Mario, or from Jacob Pate. And what he does, he makes sure that, you know. Okay, Pierre Mabemia played on the right. So he makes sure that. Damn it. Okay, nice one. So he makes sure that this ball is, is is moving into this area now and that's why we are scoring goals and and and, 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 and that's the reason as to why we were not scoring goals before uh martin odegaard because this area there was no action in 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 this area uh, for arsenal first and foremost one of the things i think he has improved at arsenal um and and, and this I, I think everybody's gonna agree with me um on this is it's our ability. Let me just pull him back. He's he's become like a pivot, some sort of kind of pivot, and he has helped us utilize these spaces in front of goal, first and foremost. But the other thing I like about Martin Odegaard is he balances, you know, balances the pitch to an extent that you have balls on the left and you have the ball. Um, on the right as well now there are not so many players that actually do this and and, and and we have to agree with each other there was a time when Arsenal was playing on the left just on the left and if, if you have realized this when Danny Sabias is on the pitch we are playing our ball on the left the reason is Sabias distributes his ball to the left always to the left I, I, I've seen that and I, I don't say this because I think, you know, he's not good enough for something like that. But I think um, Subayos is one kind of player that is linked to the left. Oh, my God. I don't know why he likes playing that ball to the left. But he's always passing this ball to the left. And, and, and what Odegaard gives you, actually, um, and I think I really laughed about this. This, this, this wasn't Bellerin. This was Chambers. But he was always, you know, he always gives you that ability to overlap as a fullback, and we saw so many crosses uh, from Callum Chambers 
initiated by runs from Martin Odegaard. We also saw the same runs, Martin Odegaard now in this area, and Kiantiani overlapping, and we saw so many runs from um, Kiantiani being utilized, and we saw so many crosses uh, from Kiantiani again, uh, initiated by Martin Odegaard. Of course, um, there, was, there, there, were, there are those penetrating passes that he always makes, and I really love them. Um, he, had, he, he made one for Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Aubameyang didn't utilize it. He, make, he made another for, um, for, for, for Bukayo Saka. Again, Saka didn't utilize it. He made another for, for Pepe. I don't know whether sh that should have been a penalty because I, thought should, I, I didn't think it was a penalty anyway. But I thought Pepe fe you know, fell down you know, quickly and easily. It should be a little bit stronger than that. You're African, you're black. I mean, I'm not trying to mean black should be strong, but we should be stronger than, you know, we should be stronger than them, don't we? But anyway, I, I, you know, away from that, I think, um, you know, Odegaard helps us move forward. And, and, and that's what he did against West Ham. Just pass the ball in these areas. Try to look out for these, you know, players in front of you and the way he receives the ball from Partey and Jaka and his awareness of players around him that's why he never loses the ball so much like, 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 like players like um Sabayos because Sabayos is not aware of you know what is around him but Odegaard is always aware and, and you can see those little tweaks and, and, and turns in the midfield that he makes you know he shows you I'm aware you're there you know I know you're there. I'm just trying to, you know, make my own thing. You know, I know you're there. Um, and, and that's the kind of football I want Arsenal to play. And that's the kind of football I wish we play game in, game out. So that is, for me, how Martin Odegaard shut down West Ham and, 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 and helped us get back in the game. If you agree with me, give me a smash on... Uh, give me a like on the video. Smash a like on the video. If you do not agree with me, go in the comment box and tell me why don't you agree with me. That our best player on that pitch was Martin Odegaard. Give me five reasons. Five reasons why you think. And also the biggest question in, in this one is. Do you think we will. Not we should. But do you think we will keep Martin Odegaard at the end of the season. My name is Kosi, And I will speak to you shortly about Mikel Atta's press conference about this London derby.